What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tool tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the built-in tool designed to help you cut holes inside of objects in Fusion 360, the hole tool. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things you're gonna do a lot of when working in Fusion 360 is cutting holes inside of objects. And you'll do this for a variety of different reasons, um, including creating holes for fasteners or openings in objects Objects. There's a lot of reasons to cut holes in objects. And so in the very simplest way, if you wanted to, you could just use sketch mode to cut a hole in an object with the extrude tool. So like for example, let's say that I wanted to cut a hole inside of this box. I could come in here and just draw a circle and then use the extrude tool to cut a hole. So, and uh, we'd use the cut operation in order to do that. That's a perfectly valid way to create a hole. And a lot of the time, if you're doing something simpler, that makes a lot of sense. However, in this situation, there's a much better tool for creating holes contained inside of Fusion 360. And that tool is called the hole tool. And so the hole tool can be found in your create options under the option for hole. And if for whatever reason you don't see it here, you can click on create and it should be down below. And you can see how what this does is this has a number of different tools and options contained inside of it to help you create holes inside of Fusion 360. And so when you first activate this tool, you're gonna to get a menu that looks like this. And you have two options here. You can either create a hole based on a point and that's gonna be a single hole, or you can also create multiple holes from a sketch. So you can use the different points in a sketch to dictate where your hole is gonna go. We're gonna start with the single hole tool, so we're gonna click right here. And so the first thing this is gonna ask us is to select the face along which we want to cut our hole. So if you start mousing over things, you can see how this gives you options and inferences for different holes inside of your model. So every time I mouse over a face, for example, this is giving me an indicator that that's the face that we'd be selecting. And so let's say that we wanted to cut a hole in the middle of this box right here. Well, the way that we would do that is we would click on this face. And you can see how, first of all, when I click on this face, this just kind of drops this in here wherever I clicked. So it's not centered or anything like that. However, this tool does inference to points. So now that I've placed this in here, I can click and drag this little blue marker. And so you can see how what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to drag this hole and center it on this point. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit of a simpler hole just for right now, just to take a look at the options here. So another way that you could place this if you wanted to be precise based off of edges is you could also set a reference line. So let's say you didn't want this to be centered. Let's say you wanted this to be off of this line by a certain amount. You could set a reference line right here and then type in a value. So let's say we wanted this to be 0.15 off of this edge we could use that line as a reference in order to place this. And we could do the same thing here. So we could set another reference right here. So let's say we wanted this one to be 0.75 off of that, which is going to be too far. So let's say we wanted this to be 0.35. You can dictate distances from different reference edges to place your holes more precisely. So and then we, before we get further into the hole tool and the different options, let's talk just a second about creating multiple holes. So if you were to select the other option in here, so when you first activate this tool, and let's roll back. We're gonna roll back to before we created this hole, but let's say you activated this tool and you wanted to create multiple different holes. So let's say you wanted to remove material on the edges here. You could use the second option, which is from sketch in order to do that. And so what we would do is we'd click on from sketch and then I'm gonna turn my original sketch back on that I used to uh, create this uh, box. But you can see how as I mouse over these points, I'm getting a little inference dot. Well, if I click on that dot, you can see how I can add multiple different locations where I would want to cut holes inside of this uh, inside of this 3D object. And one thing you're gonna notice when we did this this time is we're not actually getting any holes being cut. Um, sometimes you need to click on the flip direction button in order to make sure this is going to cut those in the right direction. But you can see how now I can create multiple holes at once by doing this. And so let's go ahead and click OK on this. You can see how we were able to use that to remove the material along the edges. But let's say we wanted to cut a hole in the middle of this object. Well, we would just use the hole tool. Um, 
use the single placement and we would click on this face. We would just drag this to make sure it's on that center point. But now let's take a look at our options for actually creating the hole. So first, there's a little drag in here where you can set your diameter of the hole that you're creating. And then there's also an arrow you can drag to set how far this hole is going to be cut. So notice that if I drag this all the way through, this is gonna create an opening in this face. So this works really well with solid modeling to keep things solid. You can see I can use this to set that distance and um, you can either set this to go all the way through or not. So you can also set those by typing in values over here. So let's say for example, I wanted this to be a quarter inch thick or a quarter inch wide. We could set that over here by typing a value. Usually I end up typing a value for the diameter of the hole and then using the arrow to just make sure that this is going all the way through. You can see how cutting holes like this is really easy. And then once we're done, we'll just click OK. And you can see how we've got that hole cut. And one of the benefits to doing this this way is if you ever decide you need to change the hole, you can just go back into your timeline down below, you can right click on the function and you can edit that feature. So if you decided that you wanted this to be like 0.15 inches or something like that, going back and making that change is really easy. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the modifiers that are contained inside of this tool. Because not only does this cut a simple hole, like this one, you also have options to affect the kind of hole that's being cut. So let's say for example, you had a hole and you had a screw head that you either needed a countersink or counter bore. There's actually an option in here that allows you to do that. So you can actually set this where it'll actually counter bore your hole so that you've got space for like a bolt head or a screw head or something like that. So you can actually design for that inside of Fusion 360. So let's say I wanted this to be 0.15, but then I wanted this to have like a point 3.5 diameter counter bore, and you can actually set the depth of the counter bore as well. So this makes it really easy to model out and create those different uh, features in here. And so one thing you're sometimes gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna create holes that have threads associated with them. So for example, let's say that we were going to create a nut right here. And so we don't want this to have a counter sink or counter board. We just want it to be a simple hole. But sometimes what you want is you actually want to model this out so that it's threaded. Well, you can set that it's threaded by clipping, clicking on this tapped option right here. You can see how the tapped option is actually going to add in screw threads to your opening. And one cool thing about this is this actually has a library of different screw threads down below. So you can actually select these to really correspond with real threaded types in the real world. So you can set the direction it goes. You can also set this up where this is actually modeled in 3D. So notice when I click this little button for modeled, instead of applying a texture, to this, just indicating that this should be threaded, this will actually model out the threads in your hole, which is really great for um, if you're trying to like 3D print something or something like that. I will say I would not recommend going through and adding this to every little part and piece inside of a model unless you really need it, because what it does is it just adds a whole bunch of extra geometry and complication in here. So I would say if you're modeling something where you actually need the geometry of the threads, that's fine. But otherwise, I would say don't necessarily do that. So and then if you just wanted to create a normal hole, so non threaded, but you still wanted access to this library of different threads. Um, so let's say you wanted this set up where you could actually pick like the real screw threads um, that'll correspond with a screw in real life, you could select the option for clearance in here and you could set this hole without actually modeling out the threading as well. And so when you're doing this, you can use your sketch geometry in order to create really precise holes. So for example, if I wanted to create multiple holes in this object based on this uh, center radius point right here, you could set this up where you could add those really easily um, just by using the points that are contained inside of your sketch. So and then one other thing I wanted to point out is you're not just limited to doing this on flat faces. So let's say for example, with this cylinder, you actually wanted to cut a hole across this, well, what you could do is you could create a tangent plane along this face, just like this. And then when you use the hole tool, you can just use that tangent plane as your base. 
and we're gonna have to flip this direction in order for this to go all the way through but you can see how you can use this to actually cut a hole across the face of the curved object as well so you can see how that's no problem cutting a hole like that and then we'll just turn our plane off and you can see how this cut that opening across that face and it intersected it nicely with the other hole that was already in here so I think that's where I'm going to end this video. I think it gives you a pretty good overview of the whole tool and its capabilities. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using this tool? Is there something you'd like to know or an application you'd like to see? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.